Hey guys, I've got an interesting video for you here today. This is a uh, poly plate capacitor that I, uh, I used to use in my larger Tesla coil setup. It works great. So this should be my first tutorial video. I've never done a tutorial of anything yet, so I appreciate any feedback. Let me know how I did. So I built this capacitor a few years ago because I really wanted to avoid having to deal with the mess of bottle capacitors, the typical Leyden jar type caps that you can make because I simply didn't have the kind of funds available for commercial pulse capacitors. So this made an excellent vise and it worked great. I've used it up to uh, 15 kV. It's essentially just made from, um, this particular one is 11 by 14 window replacement layers from your average hardware store not too hard to find. Um, all of this stuff you hear, see here is just clamps that hold the plates together. Zip ties and uh, rubber tape. It's a bit ugly but it does work very good. And This capacitor actually measures about 11 nanofarads which worked absolutely great for my 7.5 kV neon sign transformers. was able to get three, three foot arcs from a four inch secondary coil. use this capacitor in paired with this Richard Quick style spark gap I had also set up with it. It's got a few fans on the bottom. Very adjustable, really great design. So we'll get this stuff out of the way real quick. So I had went out earlier and bought three of these sheets, 8 by 10 just plastic sheets. <laughs> Makes a great dielectric and I have prepared the plates for you which are just simple sheets of aluminum foil. Now how you normally place them on such a sheet like this to avoid arc over it all depends on the typical input voltage you want to use. So for about 10 kV in I would give it about an inch of space around each side Zoom in a little bit so you can see that. Okay. So it ends up looking about like that. Now you'll notice how there's a space here and none here. Because this part of the aluminum foil is where you'll actually make your connection. So now next you place your dielectric in between, flatten it out a bit, and then grab your next sheet of foil and observe that this particular distance right here will also occur between here and here, allowing for the maximum amount of, amount of space between conductors so as to avoid any arc over. So there's an inch here, and also an inch between this point and this point. So you want to make sure those are nice and centered and even. And then attach the other plate. Now it all just stacks in parallel. You can literally make a very large capacitor out of such sheets. And the value will add as you stack them up. If you look here, I've got quite a few layers on this one. At this point, I should actually be able to hook up my meter to give you an actual value of this capacitor and its current state. Clip those on. get that. <laughs> 320 picofarads. Not bad for only two layers. 
Now to ensure that these electrodes here, the connections, physical connections of the capacitor, don't become ripped off, there's a few different things that I like to do. One thing is either reinforce it with this aluminum tape that you can get from uh, any hardware store. It's for ventilation and whatnot. That works very well. It's very conductive. And another method is to use some stranded wire. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but I just fan out the edges. <coughs> edges of the wire just sort of spread so they would lay flat. Place that right there. And simply press the other plate on top of it. <clears throat> now there's plenty of ways to keep it connected together. Um, you can use clamps for the plates. Uh, I used to use a wooden clamp. That worked just fine. You can use zip ties. Anything that you can get, get to clamp it works just fine. So that's essentially how you'd build a polyplate capacitor. And you just basically keep stacking the layers until you reach the desired amount of capacitance for your coil. I know there's quite a few Tesla coil builders out there on the internet and on YouTube that uh, will probably, hopefully, appreciate this video. Because I'm sure there's been times where those individuals have, have looked for more cost-saving ways to uh, get high-voltage capacitors. I'd say that's one of the most difficult parts of... Uh, <clears throat> building a Tesla coil. Just getting the parts. So since this video is getting rather long, um, I'm going to split it up into two parts. So the next video will actually be testing it. I'll probably use my small bipolar Tesla coil or something similar to show you the output result of this capacitor. So I hope you all enjoyed that and uh, can benefit from it and I hope it really helps you. Take care guys. Stay safe and as always, thank you very much for watching.